And since you're so optimistic, I want to read this quote, ask you to comment on it. It's this former cockroach who's become um, a human body for a while now, talking to his friends. He says, as our Latin name, Latodia, suggests, we are creatures that shun the light. We understand and love the dark. In recent times, these past 200,000 years, we've lived alongside humans and have learned their peculiar taste for that darkness, to which they are not as fully committed as we are. But whenever it is predominant in them, so we have flourished. Where they've embraced poverty, filth, squalor, we've grown in strength. And by torturous means and much experiment and failure, we've come to know the preconditions for such human ruin. War and global warming, certainly, and in peacetime, immovable hierarchies, concentrations of wealth, deep superstition, rumor, division, distrust of science, of intellect, of strangers, and of social cooperation. You know the list. In the past, we have lived through great adversities, including the construction of sewers, the repulsive taste for clean water, the elaboration of the germ theory of disease, peaceful accord between nations. We have indeed been diminished by these and many other depredations, but we have fought back. And now I hope and believe that we've set in train the conditions of a renaissance and <laughs> towards darkness. So for an optimist, I thought that this book was an interesting, an interesting take on that. So why don't you have the last word? Okay, remember, they're not, humans are not as fully committed yeah. to the darkness <laughs> as the cockroaches. So, you know, it's not all so bad. And, well, this is a stirring speech. He's just about to lead uh, the whole cabinet, who are still... In cockroach, no, are now back, back in back cockroach, cockroach form, form, and they're going to walk back to the House of Parliament. Um, uh, mission accomplished, basically. Mm, they yes. have got us out of the um, EU, as it were. Yeah. Actually, what they've done is um, announced a whole new form of finance and economics and the organization of society. It's called reversalism, and money simply flows in the opposite yes, direction. I tried very hard to think up something as completely it's pointless as Brexit. And I think I probably failed. <laughs> well, so in reversalism, you go to work, you've got to pay for your job, but you go to the shops, you get yeah. uh, take away goods, you take away the money with it. And with that money, you pay for your job. And lots follows from that. Uh, a complete nonsense, but not as absurd as turning our backs on 76 trade deals that we have around the world, which we're going to walk away from, and cooperation in science, in agriculture, for security, which we will work for the next 25 years painfully, painstakingly to reestablish, both with the EU and around the world. For what? It's just, it, as the cliche goes, it boggles the mind. Uh, you know, it, it is completely absurd. No one anymore in Britain is making an economic argument for it. It's become mystical. People now just want it. They say, we cannot wait any longer. We've got to have it. It's become like a religion, a religious fervor for something that everyone knows will make us a little worse off, maybe catastrophically worse, or we don't really know, but it'll become drearier. We will cut ourselves off from many things. Uh, we will have to slowly allow students back in because universities need the money from foreign students. So our science can't run without a free flow of people. Our agriculture, someone's got to pick our strawberries. Our national health service needs a huge influx of immigrants. We will have not solved anything about immigration our sovereignty, which people really care about. Well, what's not told is every trade deal is a compromise with sovereignty. Our membership of NATO is a compromise with sovereignty. And so is uh, our, our signature on the International Treaty on the Seabed or the Good Friday Agreement. I mean, if you fall in love and marry, you've for the sake of happiness, you've compromised, compromised some bit of your own personal sovereignty. If you decide to have children, which is, you know, for me, one of the greatest happenings in life, you sacrifice an enormous amount of personal freedom. And so it is with nations. We are deeply connected. Uh, and as the cockroaches know, uh, the more connected we are, the less chance they have to thrive. So Brexit, I think, is a greater folly than reversalism.